Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. This is where the Nortons live. David and Claudia Norton. The very same. Don't you think they have a nice house? No. No better than a lot of other houses. I think it's a lot better. And it's going to be a lot better yet. Well, everything looks nicer at this time of day, that's all. I can't see why everything looks nicer just because the sun's going down. Oh, there's just enough light to see the good points without noticing the imperfections. Same color light they use in restaurants and nightclubs. Since when do you know so much about nightclubs? Oh, I, I used to go all the time when I lived in the city. Perhaps see that. You really don't know a person until you start living with, with him in the country, I guess. I used to uh, uh, sow just wild oats, and now I'm sowing country oats. Oats too bad. <gasps> what do you know about that? <laughs> Still, some change is bound to turn up pretty soon. Oh, that is the worst <laughs> yet. Darling, let's not go into the house for a minute. It's too beautiful outside. I believe this is called the gloaming. I always thought the gloaming was a place. You did not. Yes, I did, a long time ago. Convenient of the sun to set right behind our hill, isn't it? Nice to know it's there. I'm surprised Jared Tucker let us keep it when he sold us the house. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't have if he'd had a chance not to. I guess not. What'd you do in the city today? How was it? How's Roger? Did you have the best bit on the school job? Oh, everything's fine. What'd you do today? Oh, I didn't do anything. I know that, but besides doing nothing, what else did you do? Well, let's see. I had breakfast. That's novel. Then I drove my husband to the station. You drove your husband to the station? Exactly. My, what a good memory you have. Matter of fact, I drove you to the station. And then Mama and I went shopping. That sounds ominous. <laughs> what did you shop? We shopped dinner. And liver for the cat. And a bone for bluff. And those little screw things you hang cups on. Mm -hmm. Did you put them up? Well, I didn't want my husband to have anything to do when he gets home. Oh, that would be terrible. It would be terrible. I might be reduced to reading a book. That's another thing we shopped. A book? Yep. You bought a book? Mm-hmm. And we got uh, material for the kitchen curtains, and Mama's starting to sew it already. I didn't ask and what's Mama doing. What did you do? Mm, nothing much. I called Dr. Rowland in New York. Is something wrong? Are you all right? I'm fine. Dr. Rowland said I'm a perfect example of the normal woman. The normal woman will never be able to show her face again. What else did he say? He said I should call him next week, and the week after, I should come in to see him. You... Sure, that's all he said? And he said that if there were more women like me, there would be fewer doctors. Proud of me? <laughs> Busting. Aren't you hungry? Oh, David, don't let's go in yet. That's something I want to show you. What now? You see, David, I can't just sit here in the country all day and not do anything. Not do anything? By just the list of things you, you reeled off. You did a lot more than I did today. I mean, not really do anything. David, I read a book. The same book you bought or a different one? The same one I bought. Oh. That's why I bought it. Oh. It's about farming. Well? Well? Did you learn anything you didn't know? David, the book tells you exactly how to run a little farm. And that's what I'm going to do while you're in the city every day. Well, that's going to take up your mornings. But what are you going to do all afternoon? Uh, read more books? You'd be surprised how interesting it sounds. Easy, too, I suppose. Those no. books always make it sound so easy. No, 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 this one didn't. It made it sound hard. Really? And that's why I'm only going to do half of what the book says. Well, which half are you going to do, the sowing or the reaping? Oh, I know what that means now. Can't fool me a minute. I thought I was going to do the farming around You're here. You're going to do the cows, but Mom and I are going to do the farming. Oh, I see. You see, you can't call cows farming, the book says. Mm. This book you read certainly knows where it stands, doesn't it? David, how do you know? How do I know what? Stands, that's just what the book's about. Mama and I are going to run a roadside stand. Oh, you are, eh? Mm hmm And you have your road all picked out, I suppose. No, not the road, but the crop. I know exactly what we're going to plant. What? Lilies of the valley? Asparagus. Why asparagus? 
Just because you learned how to spell it, I suppose. No, because a spell, I guess, you can make $500 an acre, the book says. David, I'm not being silly. Nobody said you were. Well, you have that look. Anyway, we're going to have a hired man to take care of the cows, and, and he can do the heavy work. Mm-hmm. And then Mom and I can spray the bugs and spread the fertilizer and, and cut off the asparagus. Mm-hmm. David, did you know they cut off the asparagus when it comes up and then it just keeps right on coming? <laughs> That's some book you read. And then Mama can sit in the stand and sell the asparagus. Uh, what does Mama have to say about that? That's just it. I haven't dared tell her. But don't you think you'd better? I can't. Why not? Well, Mama doesn't like asparagus. <laughs> then I think she would be happy to sell it to somebody else. I have the spot picked out where I think we can raise it. That's why I didn't want to go into the house. You want to look at it now? Well, I, I, I think it's better to see it before it gets dark, don't you? I guess you're right there. I'm getting pretty hungry, though. Well, we're having lamb chops for dinner. Mama just put them in so they wouldn't be ready anyway. Come on, it's so lovely out. Madame, your invitation for a promenade in the gloaming is duly received, noted, and accepted. Let's go. Hmm. A little chilly. You're sure you're not cold, darling? Oh, this coat is lots warmer than it looks. It better be. <laughs> that must be the Abbott's police dog. It's bad enough you listen in on their telephone conversations. Now you're going to start eavesdropping on their dogs. I love the sound of things far off in the country, don't you? Mm. The country's beginning to get you a little, isn't it? It'll get me even more when we have asparagus. Now, I want you to see just what I planned. How much are you going to plant? Half an acre. Oh, the book says a whole acre, but I think I'll start on a small scale so it won't be too much work. Mm-hmm. I think if you're going to plant them, one acre isn't going to be a great deal more work than a half acre. Isn't it? No. It's uh, all the work of getting the ground ready. Oh. You know, this uh, farm business uh, hasn't been planted on in years. Oh, I know, I know. But you see, I have that all figured out. It's really, it's very, very simple when you know how. Do tell. You see... Now, you see this field here, this one mm-hmm. off there? This is just right, David. I know it's How just right. How do you know right. it's right? Well, it, it looks just like the picture in the book with the brook down there. Say, that brook's really noisy now, isn't it? Do you know what those funny little green plants are? See, way down where it's wet there? Uh, skunk cabbage. How'd you find that out? David, are you sure you haven't read that book? <laughs> No, I, I hate to disillusion you, but there's plenty of skunk cabbage in Central Park in New York in the spring. Well, I didn't know that. How do you know all these things? Oh, in my wide experience in the world, I have made it my business to collect uh, such miscellaneous, fascinating, entertaining, and useless information <laughs> as possible. I think it's a jip that there's skunk cabbage in New York, don't you? You think it's unfair for anything anywhere else to be like our farm, is that it? I don't think anything can really be like our farm. There's certainly no other farmer like you. Oh, that's where you're wrong. I'm going to be just like any other farmer. Only better. I'm going to be scientific. Naturally, naturally. You've read a book. Come along, come along. Up the slope. Hey, be careful. Don't get your feet wet. There's a place across the brook here. I found it this afternoon. Well, if you're going to plant the asparagus here, why do we have to go up the hill? Well, you get a better idea on the hill. Oh, I see. You know, the first thing we have to do if we're going to plant asparagus, you know what it is? Oh, certainly. We have to get a little piece of red ribbon to tie them in bunches. We have to prepare the land. <laughs> How are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to spend the whole year planting cover crops. Oh. And then I'm going to get a disc harrow and plant them all over again. Amazing. David, listen. Now, what do you think is a better cover crop, field peas or domestic rye grass? Mm, you're two cover crops ahead of me already. And what do you think of the pH factor? I didn't know we had one. We don't. That's the whole point. We have to get one right away. Can we send away for it? Oh, now, don't be silly. It's a test to see how much acid we have in the soil. Oh. You, 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 you dairy farmers, you don't know much about raising crops, do you? Well, I guess we dairy farmers have to rely on uh, you crop farmers for instructions. See how that field looks from up here? Yeah. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? It's just the right shape for efficient operation. I never quite thought of it that way. Well, cows wouldn't either. But when you're running a tractor... When you're running a tractor, you mean. Me? (laughs) And when did we get this tractor, anyway? 
Now, tractors are really much better than horses, David. Uh, they don't make as nice a noise, anyway. But the upkeep is so much cheaper. Well, let's see. Now, we got as far as the disc harrow. Didn't I say anything about irrigation and fertilizers? No, you spared me those. David, you would be surprised by the number of inefficient farmers in this country. I was just amazed. Did anything I say give you the impression that I am not amazed? What are you amazed about? I'm amazed about how much you can learn in one afternoon with the right book. Well, there certainly is. Some people are sentimental about farming. But when I run a farm, it's going to be run properly. And it can be a lot of fun, oh, too. Of course, we'll have fun. Mm. But if you'll excuse me, I think that before we start planting cover crops and buying tractors, we ought to find a uh, hired man. Oh, we'll find one. And maybe if Mama takes to this the way I have, we won't need one as much as we thought. You know, the book said that all you have to hire is little boys to pick the berries. What berries? Well, they come after the asparagus. I think that's what it said. I think we'd better read that book over again just to be sure they don't come first. Oh, David. <laughs> what are you remembering now? Darling. Hmm? Look at our house. It's a handsome house from here, isn't it? I've never seen it from here just when it's beginning to get dark. Doesn't it look warm and friendly with the lights on? Knowing that it's yours and mine. And this is our land. We can do anything we want to to it. It's ours. You like that feeling, don't you? I do. David, it makes us very important people, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Gives us kind of a trust. I know. We have to take care of it so that whoever comes after us can feel the same way about it, too. We have to take care of it because, well, because we're us. Maybe we owe it to the farm to plant more than just asparagus. Maybe strawberries and corn Standing and... here on this hill at dusk like this, you can't even notice all the asparagus that aren't growing. You can't? <laughs> Besides which, there's only one thing we owe to this farm. What, David? And that's to be happy here. Then we don't owe it anything at all, darling. And I never will. <laughs> more and more places of business are putting in Coca-Cola coolers so that employees can pause during the day and refresh themselves. You don't need to install a special cooler at home. Just keep a supply of Coca-Cola in the refrigerator. Then you can pause between household tasks and enjoy delicious, refreshing Coke. Stands to reason you'll finish your work with less effort if you work refreshed. You know, I think Claudia's eyes are a little bit stronger than her hands and her back. What do you think, Joe? Yes, I don't think she's going to be able to raise that half acre of asparagus all by herself. Confidentially, Joe, I don't think she thinks so either. But I'm glad she's gotten so excited about the possibilities. Never thought your wife would turn into a farm girl, did you, David? <laughs> you can't hope for the impossible, but sometimes the impossible happens. For instance, I've given up hoping to find a handyman or a farmer for the place. As you said, the impossible may happen. Maybe Claudia will find somebody for you tomorrow. If anybody can find me a farmer, it'll be Claudia. And I'd love to see him. He'll really be something. Well, keep hoping till tomorrow. I'll see you then. Goodbye, Joe. Bye, David. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.